Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people has a history of protest as a slogan written on placards and chanted in the streets. But its sentiments of solidarity and humanitarian spirit have been immortalized in music. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Creo profundamente que la música juega un papel primordial en los tiempos en que vivimos. Eso para nosotros como artistas, como músicos, es muy importante dar ese mensaje. Ese mensaje de que la música es mucho más que entretenimiento y es un elemento de profunda transformación social. Porque une, porque cura, porque crea esos espacios en los cuales podemos realmente estar conectados con la belleza, que son tan esenciales en estos tiempos que vivimos. The world needs more listening, not just hearing, listening. 
Only by sharing different perspectives can we truly begin to find common ground. In 1990, composer Michael Abels wrote an orchestral piece highlighting a variety of global communities. He called it Global Warming. Hi, I'm Michael Abels. I'm a composer and music producer, and I live here in Los Angeles. The way the title of the piece is heard has changed over the 30 years. At the time I wrote it, uh, not everybody knew what global warming was. So some people might have been hearing the title, uh, hearing about global warming for the first time via the title of my piece. But also, it wasn't it was considered a scientific thing, not a political thing. No one was saying, well, that's not, a, that's not real. <laughs> People were just <laughs> looking at it as a scientific observation, as one might about gravity. I had no idea that that piece would become politically charged. Um, but now that it has been, uh, the piece is sometimes not performed. Because just to say the two words global warming is to make it sound like you're taking a political stand. So how I uh, took the title and made it relevant to my music is I did two things. First, I began the piece with a depiction of, of a vast desert. It's really a, um, it's a tone poem in that way. And I hope when you hear the introduction that you think of a desert scene and you can see the, the heat waves rising in the background and you can hear the, uh, the cicadas buzzing, as they always do in the summer uh, in Arizona, where I'm from. Um, and so I treated about the first minute of the piece really is global warming in the way that we were imagining it back in 1990. But then the piece transforms into a very joyful, um, multicultural uh, soup of different music of different cultures as heard by me. So you hear something that sounds Irish, there's some African influence, there's um, some Middle Eastern influence, there's even some South Asian influence. And those are all thrown together or presented in a very harmonious way. But then because I didn't want people to think that I was, I was trivializing the real global warming, instead of ending the piece joyfully, right when you think it's gonna end joyfully, that ending is cut off and it goes back to the desert scene from the beginning. And so the, the metaphorical thing or, or the, the th that I was trying to say underneath the music is that it's kind of our choice as humanity. Do we want to, the global warming of the introduction and the conclusion, or do we want the global warming of the bulk of the piece? We cannot live only for ourselves. A thousand fibers connect us with our fellow men. Herman Melville. Thank you. 
many kinds of artists have promoted democracy, history, and social justice, and singing groups are no exception. The Los Angeles-based a cappella group Tonality is another example of how art provides an important service. Hi, my name is Alexander Lloyd Blake. I'm Tahila Alfonso. And I'm Chloe Vaught. And, and we, we are, are members, members of, of Tonality. Tonality. I think that everyone has a role to play when it comes to activism. People have different strengths. And for some people, that's going out into the street and organizing a protest. Um, for others, it's trying to get into office and make changes that way. And I think for us in Tonality, it is through music. This is our vessel of communication. This is how we touch people. And so getting to infuse musical creation with activism is a great way for us to get in touch with our community. What sets Tonality apart for me is the fact that there is just no other choir that's doing what Tonality is doing in, like Chloe said, infusing political activism with music. I think the ideals of democracy in terms of equality and, and access and voices being raised is something that we have all hoped for, but we realize that that is not exactly what, what happens a lot. And we focus our music on speaking and helping to uplift voices that have been marginalized and have been silenced. And I feel like our concerts really try to embody what we would like to see equitable representation, equal respect of performance practice, sharing stories and let that lead policy as opposed to ideals and facts. Not that those are not important, but people are not emotionally stirred to change by listening to numbers. I think right now what we need is for people to feel connected to each other and to really start to see and hear other people's experiences and validate them for what they are and not our understanding of them. And I think our concerts and the music that we bring allow people to emotionally engage in situations and environments and labels that they might not have felt close to before. And to me, that is how real change starts. When you start to feel like that issue of homelessness or police violence or mental health, that is not that issue over there, it's my issue. Music allows us to do that. Choral music allows us to do that because we embody community in the way that we perform. And so I feel like this is how we can use our voice and our environment to create the type of democracy that we want to see. Democracy cannot succeed unless those who express their choice are prepared to choose wisely. The real safeguard of democracy, therefore, is education. Franklin D. Roosevelt.
just as you were. I do not need freedom when I'm dead. I cannot live on tomorrow's bread. Democracy will not come today. The world is full of people who believe in freedom and justice. I am one. 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 Music can be a platform for the development and the sharing of ideas because it's something we all understand. It's a universal language, if you will. No matter your culture, your background, your language, we all understand music. We can see the instrumentalists, we can hear it, we can feel the rhythm. When someone's feeling an emotion, they can share it with another person that might be feeling the same emotion. Music really does connect people. The thing that excites me most about the future is that it is what you make it. With a good plan, a good group of people, good execution, you can create a positive impact in your community that can last a lifetime. We have the voice. We have the power. It's all up to us and what we are willing to do with the future. Democracy to me means that we have freedom to pursue our dreams, to express our thoughts, to Mm, vote for people that we want to represent us, um, I think it also comes with responsibilities. It comes with the responsibilities to follow the laws that get passed by the people who we vote to represent us. It comes with the responsibility of taking care of the rest of the people in our democracy. Those responsibilities don't always feel like freedom, but they're actually crucial to maintaining what freedom really is. Democracy, at least in my view, is the voice of the people. What people want uh, in order for humanity itself to constantly move forward and to ascend and lift itself, to be human beings, to be better tomorrow than they are today, to be better today than they were yesterday. Activism comes in many shapes and sizes. And around many issues. Such as fighting for our planet, improving women's education, and raising awareness around oppression and marginalization. Just as global leaders use their talent and influence to create positive change, so too do composers. Composers like Jesse Montgomery, whose 2014 composition, Banner, was written in tribute to the 200th anniversary of the U.S. national anthem, The Star-Spangled Banner. The Star-Spangled Banner is an ideal subject for exploration and contradictions. For most Americans, the song represents a paradigm of liberty and solidarity against fierce odds. And for others, it implies a contradiction between the ideals of freedom and the realities of injustice and oppression. A tribute to the U.S. national anthem means acknowledging the contradictions, leaps and bounds, and milestones that allow us to celebrate and maintain the tradition of our ideals. Montgomery's Banner mixes up many anthems and folk songs from around the world, representing the diverse cultures that make up our great country. Songs like, This Land is Your Land, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is often referred to as the Black National Anthem, the Mexican National Anthem. Lo Eterno, a tribute to Che Guevara. And very present throughout Banner is its namesake, the Star Spangled Banner. When the melodies from these anthems interact, they create a multi-layered fanfare. So many perspectives and contradictions. 
an anthem for the world we live in.
My name is Wesley Sumter, and I am a percussionist with the LA Phil. That means I play cymbals, drums, timpanis, xylophone, the trash can, and the kitchen sink. Music can be a platform for us to develop and share ideas because it allows us to tell our story through a specific perspective. Someone may write something that's in the minor key to say how they feel about the current events in this world. Somebody may write something that's atonal. And those things come across in our intentions with how we write for specific instruments, what key we play in, what ensembles we use, the spaces that we share our ideas and our music in. The thing that excites me the most about the future of the orchestra and orchestral works has to be the audiences. Because the audience plays the most pivotal role when we perform. That's what we live for. When, it, when a concert's over and we finish our last note, and it's that silence between the last note and someone clapping and saying bravo and screaming, that is what we truly live for. And now we're starting to see people express the way they appreciate our art so many different ways from when we are at the Hollywood Bowl, people just screaming and just really just exuding brilliance and excitement and, and ecstasy and all these different things. And then in the concert hall, it's a similar thing, but we're playing new commissions and we're playing all of these things that people don't listen to on a regular basis, but we have touched their soul in so many different ways. And those people are starting to look like me. They're starting to look like my grandparents, they're starting to look like, from an age standpoint, from all over the place. People that don't really speak the same language, but everyone's understanding what this art is supposed to be. So the audience, they're the ones that go tell all of their friends and everyone else, like, oh, you need to come check out the symphony. You need to go see this. This is a great cultural experience for you. So then it just continues to bring people into the concert hall. But the main reason that's important is because it makes sure that we are representing what the people want as much as possible with the works that we commission around these ideas that they may be dealing with on a daily basis. Music empowers us. It gives voice to what's important. It celebrates our similarities while respecting our differences. We all belong. You do too. We have started a conversation. Now you continue it. How will you celebrate unity? How will you raise your voice and the voice of others. How will you bring power to the people? It's a relief to hear the rain. It's a sound of billions of drops, all equal, all equally committed to falling, like a sudden outbreak of democracy. Watch, when it hits the ground, instantly becomes a puddle, or rivulet, or flood. Alice Oswald. Thank you.